Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Signing Day Live. I'm Mike Lucas for UWBadgers.com, and I'm joined by Wisconsin's head football coach, Gary Anderson. Gary, you've just written the first chapter. Is it going to be a pretty good read? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Recruiting classes are always defined after about three years, but I feel great about this group of kids, and you know, I think the coaches did a tremendous job, and uh, everybody involved got us where we need to be. Give us a little bit of an overview of uh, how you went about uh, collecting these players. Well, you know, first of all, I've said this many times, and I'm going to keep saying it. I think that uh, Thomas Hammock and Ben Strickland did an unbelievable job of solidifying the class and, and just letting the young men weather the storm, if you will, through the transition. Um, but that, that was a big first step. And then for us to be able to get into each young man's home and uh, let the coaches understand where we were and uh, who we are, let the families understand, and then let the young man be, start to build a trust factor with us. And I think the last thing to that piece of the puzzle, as far as the patience with the, with the high school coaches, was was uh, unbelievable, really. It just there, let this whole thing filter through, let us come in and let you understand who we are. We didn't have to go out and tell them about the education at the University of Wisconsin, the facilities. They'd all been on their trips. It was just simply let them understand who we are as a coaching staff. And then we went out and found four of the young men that I think will uh, be great additions to this class. You didn't have a whole lot of time to build some of the relationships. Yeah. Uh, how did you go about doing that in, in that small window? Well, I think it was every, every young man we tried to get uh, the assistant coaches into the home, the coordinator into the home, and then myself into the home. And uh, that wasn't 100% perfect, but we, we did it for the most part. And uh, when you walk in, we just want to present our program to them and let them understand you know, our core values, what our beliefs are. Uh, again, start to build that trust and then let them know that the most important factor for me as a head coach is to make sure I hire coaches that care about young men first and want to change young men into men, ask them to succeed in three areas every day, socially, academically, and athletically. And that takes time to go through that process with every family. And uh, there's many questions. Uh, I didn't ask them to trust us initially, but I asked them to let us, let us uh, grow uh, on them, if you will, and then open up the questions for us as we move forward. And I think that those uh, conversations went very well. I'm sure every prospect wanted to know a lot about you, but also they want to know about their position coach, don't they? It's a big part of the process. It really is. And, um, you know, those, those, a lot of times this is a six, seven month process, even a year process, and it's all of a sudden crammed down into four simple weeks. Uh, it makes it difficult for families to understand. And so, you know, there's a lot of phone calls, a lot of information that went out. And, um, you know, I think that uh, our, they're good coaches and they're good recruiters, but I think they understand that at the end of the day, these families believe we want what's best for their young men. Did you have a list in your own mind? Did you know some of the assistance that you wanted to bring along with you if you made a move, wherever that move might have been? Absolutely. You know, I think as a head coach, you, uh, you have to be able to be in that position to think ahead, whether it's you know, not so much leaving a school and going to a new school, but there is coaches that are going to leave, uh, especially if you have success. You know, there's an opportunity for coaches to get jobs at different places, whether it's a head job, a coordinator, whatever it may be. So um, you're always in your mind trying to make sure that you can stay one step ahead. And uh, you know, I had a, a good list built. Um, and fortunately, every single one of those guys, when I asked them to come, came. There are a lot of different intersections with, with many of, uh, of your assistants. Mm -hmm. uh, is that important to you, that type of continuity, maybe them knowing a little bit about you already and how you operate and vice versa? I think it is. You know, trust and loyalty is everything to me. And when I'm dealing with coaches or I'm dealing with players, it's, uh, it's a big part of who we are. So when I hire a, an assistant coach, I've got to be able to, to have the belief or have the knowledge that I can trust him and that he's going to be loyal to the program as a whole. And uh, I think every one of these coaches are in that spot. And, but it's, uh, you know, it's a different dynamic. A, every fit, just like for every young man, every school is not for them. And this fit is, is very unique and it's a special fit. Uh, my beliefs fit the University of Wisconsin very well. And that's why I'm here. And we're not going to change. Were you able to address some of the needs that you feel this program has right now? Yeah, I think when you when you break down a recruiting class, you always want to look to next year. Next year is the most important year, without question. But you also want to build for the future, so you want to stabilize yourself with uh, uh, as far as the numbers in your class. Maybe it's 20 to 25 every single year from the freshman to the senior class. When we went and looked back, we thought we needed to get some uh, to DBs in the program. You know, we signed five young men and good quality kids, a couple safeties, three young corners. You know, we have uh, Sojourn and Keelon are both in the program right now. Got here in January. Uh, that's big for them to, to have the head start there. And I feel like we've, we've done a nice job there. Continue to move forward with the offensive linemen. You know, physical young men that are uh, great kids that want to play offensive line the right way. And, and we did a great job there. And you know, with Corey at the running back, Corey was 
is so impressive when I got into his home and uh, what, the goals he has set for him will fit very well in Thomas's room because we all know the expectation level in that running back room is very high. What kind of reception did you get? Very good. You know, it was at the, at the beginning, it was cautious, you know, and it should be. Understandably so. Home, absolutely. You walk into a home for the first time, it's like, okay, now what's going on here? You know, who are you? What are you about? You know, uh, they've, they've never seen my face or anybody else's face that, that was on the staff before. And you're going to walk in there and you're going to start saying all this information and you're giving them who you are and in a short period of time. So it was cautious at the beginning, I think, as we went through the home visit. Uh, it, they, they realized a little bit of who we are. And again, we just asked them to just, just listen. Um, ask the questions that they have, and then build a relationship as we went through time. I think you've said it uh, a number of times. This is a pretty easy school to sell, is it not? Yeah, I never use the word sell at the University of Wisconsin for me. We're going to show them a tremendous uh, football situation at the highest level in college football, uh, an unbelievable world-class education, and that is so powerful to be able to say a world-class education when you walk into a living room. It's a uh, and, and it's factual, so uh, we'll, we'll show them exactly who we are. And then you get to come to the city of Madison, where you know the, the support, uh, the belief, the want to, the care factor for football here is unbelievable. And the care factor for the young man to be successful. How many kids I see that have been in this program for years, back when Coach Alvarez was, was coaching, um, that are still here living and have great jobs and are giving back to the community. I'm curious, was there one question or theme that cropped up with any number of recruits during the process? Question uh, they may have had for you or about the program. Well, I would say, you know, the biggest question was when you start talking about an offense because everybody had this vision of we were so spread at, uh, you know, at Utah State, and that's all we did. And uh, we had to show people that that wasn't factual and we wanted to run the football. So that would have been on the offensive side. You know, on the defensive side, the biggest question from a football standpoint was, are you going to be the odd front or the even front? And I think we showed people that you can very easily and effectively do both and get the best 11 men on the field on both sides. So from a football standpoint, those were by far the two biggest questions. And then, um, you know, from, from a standpoint of just walking in, uh, overall was, you know, who are you? <laughs> what, what are you going to do? You. What are you going to do for my son? You know, that's a question you get all the time yes. as a recruiter, don't you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, they want to they wanna know what, uh, where, where are you going to take us and, and how are you going to allow him to be able to be successful. And for me, when I, when I walk out of every home, I look at the family in the eyes and I say, you know, in four years, five years, sometimes two or three years, I want to be able to have you walk into my office or I walk back into your home and I'm going to say, you know, I did my part to help him be successful. He created his own world that he's in, but uh, just as you are, I'm going to be there to, to support him along the way. Going to hug him hard when it's good, and if it's not right, we're going to discipline him the right way, and we'll always tell him things that maybe he might not always want to hear, but it's a good chance you as a parent or as a mentor, we're going to tell him what you would tell him. Fair enough. You mentioned the offense. We're going to talk a little bit more about that facet of the game when we come back. You're watching Signing Day Live. Welcome back to Signing Day Live. Fans love talking about quarterbacks, don't they? Oh, Isn't yeah. that always yeah, the number always one the hot topic? topic. Yes. Any time of the year. <laughs> yep. Well, well, they're the only guy that touches the ball every snap, so they're yes. pretty important. 
Well, you, you've got a, a quarterback out of a, a junior college, Tanner McAvoy. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, the first thing about Tanner is he's, he's three for three. You know, he still has three years left, which I think a lot of people think he's a junior college kid. He is, but he's a little bit different. He's got three years left. Tanner, uh, when we walked in here, we wanted to be able to, you know, get ourselves in a position from the quarterback standpoint to, to add a quarterback. And Tanner, is, is every quarterback has a little bit of different dynamic of who they are. Tanner can, can run very well. He can hurt you with his legs. Uh, he can hurt you with his mind. And he can hurt you with his arm. And that's exactly what we're looking for in a quarterback. Now, he's got some stiff competition here. And I feel very good about the quarterbacks uh, within the program, and it's going to be fun to watch them develop. We have had some injuries at the quarterback position, so our position as, as, quarterback, as, as coaches, we want to create as much competition that we can, as we can at every position and make sure that uh, you know, we put ourselves in the, the spot to be as successful as we can as a football program. Gary, how, how will he fit into the type of offense that you want to run, and will you make some tweaks? to accommodate what he does best well, if, think, if, if in yeah. fact he's getting yeah. a lot of the snaps. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see exactly where it goes. That's the, you know, Coach Ludwig does a tremendous job of adjusting the offense to the players who are in the scheme. And I think that, you know, with Tanner, uh, he can run. And I've watched these young men in the program the last four or five uh, workouts here we've had the last couple of weeks. They can run too. So we do definitely want to have a flavor of the quarterback being a threat to be able to do some things. Not 30 times a game, uh, but if you sit back and you, you watch the NFL and you, you know, watch the Seahawks and you sit back and you watch the 49ers and you sit, you know, all, all these quarterbacks that are coming in there, you want to have that flavor of if you break down a protection, he's going to make you pay as far as, you know, he might make a defensive end miss or whatever. We want to have a little bit of some option run game, a little bit of some read zone, and it just really uh, forces off, or excuse me, defenses to play you different. They're not as risky, if you will, and it allows the quarterback to be more effective in the throw game and it allows the wide receivers to understand what's going on within coverages. The read zone is really taking the NFL by storm with yes. some of the young quarterbacks. Will you incorporate some of that into yeah. the attack? Yes, we'll have some of that. You know, we're going we're gonna to be under center most of the time, but we'll get back in there and, and uh, maybe have a little bit of pistol, but some, some read zone situations. And it's, a, it's when you have great running backs and you have the ability to turn a run play in to really getting to the perimeter in a very short period of time in three or four steps, if you block it right correctly at the point of attack, it becomes a punt return very quickly. And those running backs love to be out there in space with their shoulders squared up moving downfield. Now, they're powerful, they're big, they're strong. The offensive line also likes those reps too because to be quite frank with you, a few of those sideways runs, every time that happens, look how far the defense is running. Defense is sitting there, you run a power play, defensive guys are running, what, four or five or six yards sometimes. Now I'm running to the, to the field, those defensive guys are running 50, 60 yards in one snap, and you do that four or five times a game, it adds up quickly into the fourth quarter. Now all of a sudden the power row's hitting for seven or eight yards. One of the running backs you're bringing into the program is Corey Clement. Yep. Talk a little bit about what he could bring to, to the offense. Well, Corey was, uh, he, he's going to fit so very well within that room. He's tough, he's physical, uh, he has unbelievable uh, goals that he set for himself, just like the other young men in that, in that running back room. So high expectations of himself, uh, there's high expectations of running backs at the University of Wisconsin, he'll fit in there well. Unbelievable family. You walk into the home and the support group that he has is very, very impressive and excited about uh, him and what he can do, but he has great speed, he has great vision, he catches the ball very well, and he has the ability to make you miss at the point of attack. So he's, uh, he's very, very intriguing, and there you see a nice little stiff arm out of him as he's a pretty impressive young man. Based on what you know of uh, James White, Melvin Gordon, yeah. will they all have a little bit of a different dimension now if you put them together? Yeah, I think so. You know, and, and you're going to see us in those positions where there, there could be two and sometimes even three backs in the game if, you, if they end up being those young men and catch the ball that I think the way they can. And it, it really gets hard to, to defend and to deal with. And you know, you, you, then you turn around and you put the fullbacks in the, in the, in the game plan. And, uh, there's there's a, a lot of variables out there for people to deal with, but you want to have uh, the, the best offense I've been around have two or three quality running backs and that can come in and a little bit different. Each one of them has their own different style. They run the same plays, but they do things a little bit different, and I think that's exactly where we'll be. We talked earlier about some of the needs for, for this program. I, I don't think it's any secret. Wide receivers mm -hmm. falls under that category. Rob Wheelwright is a, a freshman. Um, tell us a little bit about Wheelwright. Yep. Again, uh, th through the process with Rob, it was uh, it was great to get into his home and just kind of understand, you know, who he is and, and his family. A tremendous family, tremendous support. Uh, he's big, he's tall, he's a physical wide receiver, runs well. Um, his ability to, to make you miss out in space is, is going to be important for him to continue to develop that mindset. Uh, but we've got to have a big play receiver that can get out and when he catches the ball, the ability to catch contested balls 
Robert does a nice job with that. We want to see what Robert can do when he gets there and his ability to be able to catch the hitch or uh, the, the five or ten yard route and turn that into a 50, 60 yard run like he just did on that tape right there. So that's, uh, that's the key of a great wide receiver. But a well-rounded young man, and I think Jazz will come in and, and also give us some added position, uh, 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 some added depth, and a future wide receiver that's going to be a very good football player. Will Wright has some great DNA, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Oh, my. Yeah, yeah he does. It's, it's pretty impressive. And actually, I, I, back in the day, I, uh, I played with uh, a family member of them. I found that in the home. So that's a, it's, it's a small world we live in. But uh, uh, there's a long tradition there of, of tremendous athletes. You haven't stopped recruiting wide no. receivers, though, have you? No, we're not. No, we're, we still potentially have a couple spots. And you know, our, we are always going to be a staff that's not just looking into the next year, but always looking through this year. And we do have a, a possibility to have a couple more spots. And, uh, where those young men come from, if the right man, uh, young man shows up, we'll take a wide receiver. But we're going to look at him as a, as a game changer and, and a quality wide receiver. There's a, a, you know, thousands and thousands of stories of young men out there. and uh, I know there's a couple kids out there that we can go find um, if it's the right fit again for the University of Wisconsin. When some of the fans take a look at your recruiting list today, one of the names that's going to pop out at them is a Watt. It's mm -hmm. a T.J. Watt, mm -hmm. and obviously there's been great success here yep. uh, with the Watt boys. Yep. He played quarterback a lot during his senior year, but you look at him as a tight end? Yeah, he's, well, uh, when I was sat in the home, I look at him as a, a tight end, a defensive end, a lot of different things. So uh, th you want to talk about a competitive family. It's unbelievable when you get around those, those kids and uh, the competition level there is wanting to be the best. And obviously what J.J.'s done is, is fantastic, and Derek is a tremendous player. But we, we walk in and, and we used to sit and say, what, what is T.J. going to bring to the table? Well, he's, he is a very, very good athlete. And he reminds me of a young man that I had at, at uh, Utah who's now starting for the Ravens, Paul Kruger. Paul was a, a quarterback in high school, very much the same body type. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how these young men develop and, and see what, what he takes off into, but he's going to be a tremendous player, I believe. Let's talk some numbers here. Offensive line. Are you where you need to be in terms of numbers? Close. You know, we're still minus two for the overall, the perfect world in recruiting. But with the 85 scholarship, it never breaks up perfect. But we have to make sure that we, you know, we have a large number of freshmen in that class. And there's going to be a challenge as we move forward with these young freshman offensive linemen to develop quickly after next season. We feel very good about it this season. Uh, we've got to stay healthy, and that's a big part of every season. But our young, young offensive linemen need to develop quickly. And in next year's class, I would expect to sign probably four or five offensive linemen again. Do you look for a specific type of person to play the old line? Tough, ornery. Little mean, mean, mean streak to them, all that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, you, you, this uh, national recruiting at the University of Wisconsin at this position for the offensive line is exactly who we will be because you, uh, you talk about playing offensive line here with a tremendous tradition. It's it got to help, doesn't it? Kids, yeah, absolutely. But you know, we want to be, want to be big, physical, tough-minded young men that are smart. You were telling me the other day that you should be able to go in any home, any place in the country, and if, the, if there's a question about playing offensive line or running back, that prospect should perk up and Absolutely. listen. Absolutely. Yeah, I sure would. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would look at that and say, look at the tradition, uh, look at the expectations, look at the number of young men that are in the NFL. I mean, it goes on and on. And, um, you know, it's, it's a very, very, every, every position group at different schools have uh, a different level of, uh, you know, I guess, uh, expectations, if you right. will. But if you're going to be an offensive lineman or running back here, you have high expectations. Well, what we'll do now is we'll take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about def – you love defense, don't you? I love you? defense. Yeah. At heart, you're a <laughs> defensive player. We'll talk yeah. about that next on Signing Day Live.
Welcome back to Signing Day Live. When you look at the players that you've signed, mm -hmm. the defensive players, what stands out about this group? Well, I think uh, probably their athleticism. Uh, I really like the way they run, and I was really impressed with the, the commits that were here when I walked into their living rooms and saw them for the first time was how big they were. You know, you look at Alec, you look at Chikwe, you look at Garrett. I mean, those are big, physical young men, and the tape with their athleticism uh, they're ahead of their time as far as uh, their physical, the way they, way they present themselves physically. Alec James came here and he wanted to just really talk with you and your yeah. defensive yeah. staff to see where he might fit in. And it, obviously he was impressed. Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's a big statement for Alec to actually say he wanted to talk. Because Alex is not, he does not mix words, which I love in a kid. But he, he really wanted to, he made the decision the right way. He wanted to spend time with the, with the coaches. He wanted to be able to understand who we were after we went into his home. He came back again with his grandfather, his grandmother, and his mom. And we spent some quality time together and uh, just understanding where he fit within the defensive scheme. Uh, he, he is a very, very smart young man and uh, unbelievably gifted. The way he runs with a young man that's that big is it's uh, that's a, it's a special kid. I think he's really intrigued with, with your defensive yes. scheme. And maybe you can explain what this defense might look like next fall. Yeah, well, it, when, when you have a young man like Alec, and uh, it gives a, you an opportunity to do a lot of things with him. And again, you can put him in space, and he can be a, a true pass rushing defensive end. He can slide off and get into the odd front, which we will do. We'll go from the four-man front to the odd front a lot because of the way we space the defense. It's a very simple transition for us, but it does cause a lot of headaches for for offenses to be able to deal with, and he is that young man that can do that. He's big enough and physical enough and powerful enough to be uh, a run stopper, yet still be in a position to rush the passer, and he runs well enough to get involved in pass coverages. And that allows you to be able to open up the, the zone blitzes and what we call creepers within our defense and uh, strategic ways to bring four, but you'll still play uh, basic zone coverages behind him and even sometimes some man coverage behind him. So he's, uh, he'll fit this defense very, very well. It'll be fun for him. He's got to be able to blitz, cover, rush the pass, or stop the run. Other than that, he didn't have to do anything. I hear you. I hear you. One of the players you added, what's in the commit, was Leon Jacobs. Yes. Don't know much about him, so you're going to fill us in now. Yep. Yeah, Leon, uh, Coach Aranda basically found Leon as, as we were just going through the, the recruiting process and uh, continued to recruit uh, throughout the day when he was back in California. And, and, and Leon's a young man that's played two years of football, uh, unbelievable basketball player, did some tremendous things and uh, decided that uh, he was going to try football. And the high school coaches did a great job of talking him into playing football. And uh, it was the right move. He, his, his best days are definitely ahead of him. He's a, a tremendous, tremendous young man. Uh, comes from a great home, high expectations of him academically, and, and to be real quite, quite frank with you, the education at the University of Wisconsin was just something that that family could no way say no to. Go back to the need factor again. Badgers graduate three seniors in the secondary, so that's got to be a priority. You got a junior college safety mm -hmm. that um, I would assume has the ability to come in and play immediately. That's the hope. You know, when you when you, when you recruit Donnell, and, and we had uh, looked at Donnell quite a bit over the last year, really, and, and saw him grow and develop as he went through his sophomore season, and uh, he had a lot of options, and we got him got on him again a little bit late. Uh, we were he was on our radar. Uh, in the past and then we got back on him late after he came back from his really was going to be his last trip and we asked him to come out and come here on the last weekend and uh, he handled himself very very well excited about him expecting to come in and compete in that safety position again the young men in the program want that spot uh, obviously and it's going to be a hard fought battle to uh, to get that spot but he he's tall he's athletic uh, a very very smart young man and is excited to uh, for his opportunity to be part of this program you going to be aggressive on defense? Is that yeah, part of what you absolutely. do? Absolutely. Yeah, I think we'll be. Uh, and, and there's times when we'll uh, appear to look more aggressive than we really are because of the way that Coach Aranda builds up the, the not really the pressure schemes, but the, 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 the ability for an offensive line to be able to ID us and find out where we're coming from. We may rush three and it'll feel like a pressure to the quarterback because of where we're coming from and how we're coming from and we're still even dropping eight or dropping seven people back into coverage so but you know we want to definitely mix it up uh, we want to be an aggressive defense that flies around the football most importantly has a smile on their face and gets after people and, and uh, uh, takes a lot of pride in, in making big plays nothing will put a smile on your face 
quicker than a takeaway, though, won't it? Oh, yeah. That's you love the, the takeaways. As you talk to Coach Aranda, that's going to be a big part of, of uh, you know, what, what he believes in on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, they, they say it's, it's interesting. We talk about takeaways. You always you practice it. You preach it. You talk about it all the time and say, we got to get them. we got to get them. It's athleticism. I believe a very athletic defense uh, finds a way to be able to create turnovers and gets the ball in their hands. And it's a, it's a game changer. You know, it's on our plan to win. Take care of the football. Uh, if you can win the turnover battle, your chances of winning a football game goes way up. Gary, we, we kind of touched on, on some of the secondary needs, but are there defensive backs in this class that might be able to help, if, if not in the two deep special teams? Yeah, you know, I would hope so. I, you, when you look at Sojourn as he comes in as a young corner, and, you know, Keelan has got the, he, he's still coming back from the knee injury, so he's a little bit hampered through spring. But as Sojourn grows and develops, uh, he's already gained eight pounds. He's been here for, what, two weeks of school, and he's gained eight pounds, so he's moving in the right direction. He's very gifted. He's very talented. Uh, how he handles it mentally is the next step. You know, does at some point, does it uh, become too much for him to be prepared to get on the field as a freshman? I don't think it will. Um, I have great expectations for him as a, a player to come in and compete early and feel very good about that. Now, Jakari Washington is another young man who we feel great about. Jakari is a, a very, very fast, athletic, uh, tough-minded young man and you know, got in on him late again through this recruiting process and he was here last weekend with his family and uh, with his, actually his mom and his grandmother and uh, they were very excited to be here. With today's offenses, it takes a really special player to to be on the corner, doesn't it, and make plays? It does. It does. It was especially with what we asked them to be able to do. We want to be able to play man coverage. And I was impressed. In our workout this morning, 6.30 this morning, those corners were out there, and, and they were working, and they were able to backpedal, and they, there's no football involved. Uh, but I will say this. You can really see them move their feet, move their hips, their want to, to learn and, and digest the program. That, the Asking them to, to be involved in is, is a, a high priority for those kids. So a couple of these young men, I believe, can come in and help us. There's going to be times when we have four corners on the field, so uh, a lot of opportunities. You've got to be excited, too, about that returning front seven. Oh, yeah. I know you got a peek at it of it during the yeah. preparation for the Rose Bowl. you got some good players there. Yeah, there is. And they, uh, I would say this as a whole, the defense is uh, is – very excited about the, the tweaks of being able to play some man coverage, the ability to be able to uh, play some three deep, to be able to play some quarters, to have some zone blitzes, to have some zero, bre zero pressures where we just kind of lay it all on the line and say, here we come, you know, make a play, we're going to make a play, or you make a play. But they're, they're so eager to learn. And as a coach, you know, one thing we're going to have to be careful of is not giving them too much because these young men in this program are so smart and so excited about being able to handle a lot of defense that it makes you as a coach say, well, we can do this and this and that. Pretty soon you're going to do too much. So we've got to be on guard with that a little bit. But uh, they'll be very talented. They're tough, physical, good tacklers, and football's important to them, and they love playing it. Ready to take some questions? Absolutely. Okay, what we'll do is we'll take another break, and we'll take some questions from the fans right after this. You're watching Signing Day Live. Welcome back to Signing Day Live. This is our attempt to be a little interactive with our fans. Questions. Questions. Got it. Question number one from David Coe. 
Will you aim to keep a power running attack with the zone blocking schemes? And how do you plan on util utilizing wide receiver Jared Aberderis and tailback James White? So first things first, power running attack, mm -hmm. zone blocking schemes, that schemes does that all fit in? Yeah, it does. You know, we'll, we'll definitely be, a, uh, I think when you talk about the power play, it's, uh, we, we, it's going to be the base. And it's, uh, it's a very powerful play. It's very hard to defend, and it'll be a base of what we do. And then we're also going to get ourselves in position when you talk, talk about the zone blocking schemes. We're going to be a physical zone blocking team. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to be a, a point of attack downhill running team uh, a lot of the time. We're excited about the opportunity to be able to do that. We have the big boys up front, very talented tight ends backs that are physical, tough-minded young men. So uh, I agree with that statement that we will definitely, uh, uh, that'll be a big, that'll be the base of our run game, those two schemes. Gary, did you run a pistol at all at Utah State? Uh, yeah, we did. We, we got into some pistol situations, and, you know, the pistol is, again, it's hard to defend as long as you uh, take the time to, to practice it the right way and take care of it. It does have its uh, faults just like everything else. It's a little bit harder for protections and things for the backs to be able to deal with. But uh, if it fits our offense as we move forward, we'll get into that. But we'll definitely be under center a lot and we'll be in the you know some shotgun uh, runs and we'll see if the pistol becomes part of what we do. Okay, how do you plan on utilizing Jared Aberderis? Yes, we'll Jared is, Jared. you know, he, he does a tremendous job of, of number one leadership every single day in the weight room, in the classroom, in the team meetings. He's there and he's a big part of the team. So uh, as a head coach, I'm really excited about that because he's such a tremendous leader. His athleticism, I remember last year, and I was telling the story to the staff the other day when, when uh, it was, I believe it was Oregon State last year that, that he got injured in uh, when he got a concussion or what, whatever had happened to him in that game. And uh, we had prepared for him and we had basically tweaked the whole game plan at Utah State to have to deal with him. And I think he has tremendous respect for every opponent that he plays. And uh, we expect him to be a big play guy in the offense that makes uh, big plays down the field and uh, be the guy that when we need something, he's the guy we're going to go to. Now you have to find that complimentary receiver oh, or sure. two. Yes, yeah. Hopefully two uh, that we can get into the position to take the pressure off of him. Because right now, I go back to a year ago, we were scheming to take him out of the football game. So I if we're going to bracket why. coverage, we're going to go after him and we're going to play him up high and we're going to play him down low and make sure that we don't give him the opportunity to get open or uh, improve our chances but he's a he's a very talented receiver and we have to have some other young men become threats and now he'll be that much better. Those tight ends uh, are, are, that's a position group I'm sure you're looking yes, forward to working yes. with. Yeah great kids tough-minded again they are very athletic uh, they, they they're impressed me by their size their athleticism um, but now their ability to catch the football and get out there on tape continues to show up so I'm excited to get to spring ball and see how they do it live as far as catching and they impressed me the way they caught the ball in the Rose Bowl. Back to the question from David James White where does he fit in? Well, uh, a lot of places, and I, I think all those young men, as far as that, that core group of players, we're going to ask them to be able to run the ball physically, to be able to get themselves involved in, uh, in the run game from the inside and the outside and stress the edges of the defense as long as stress it downhill. And we're also going to ask them now to be much more involved in the throw game. Uh, we'll line them up as wide receivers at times. He'll be out there as a wide receiver. He'll come back in in motion. We may start in an empty formation and bring him back in and ask him to be able to do some things within the run game there. And then the screen game. I, I see a position for him to be very, very effective as far as uh, putting himself and, and taking his game to the next level in that area. So I uh, want him more involved in the position to make big plays in space. Okay, let's go to our next question. It's from Mike. When is the last member of the coaching staff going to be announced? Is there a timetable? Yeah, well, it, there is a timetable in my mind, and I sure hope it's within a week, and that's, that's my goal. The coaches are going to go through this week and uh, finish off the, the week with the young men. They're going to go back and get their families and gather their belongings and get back to Madison for good. I'm going to stay here and try to get this solidified, and really it's been on hold for a couple of weeks because it was all about the young men in the program and recruiting, and now I've got to switch gears and get that done so we can get the last coach in here for the wide you like how the chemistry has been building with the assistants who have been on campus? I do. You know, we've been able to have some activities with the players. We had a Super Bowl activity, had all the kids down the players' lounge. The coaches had a chance to be around the players in a, in a non football setting which was big and we've been able to when you when you live in a hotel okay with uh, four or five guys and yes go out to dinner every single night you better like each other so we've been able to do that. This is a good chance too to talk about your strength coach because I know yesterday 
you mentioned that Evan Simon yes. is a coach. Yes, he is, absolutely. And all those guys down there, they, they do such a tremendous job, and they're just a, a, an extension of this coaching staff. They're just as important as me or any other member of this coaching staff. And uh, Evan and his crew are doing a great job. I think the young men down there understand we want to be fast-paced. You know, we're going to be in and out of there in an hour, and that's the goal. It's to get in and get out uh, and to take care of them. They're, they're doing a great job of building relationships and uh, moving ourselves in the right direction there. And Evan has uh, done a great job of uh, he has the most uh, he spent the most time with them if you will at this point and from what I understand the, the kids are reacting very well. You had a phrase too about rehabbing don't you? Yeah yeah what, what we, we want to prehab to stop rehab so All right, explain that's where that. we want to be well it, you know Evan does a great job of, of looking at each young man and look at maybe his deficiencies each one of us have a different deficiency I may be tight my hamstrings you may have a bad shoulder whatever it may be we want to teach young men that just because the hour you spend in the weight room and you have a deficiency you need to spend an extra 15 20 minutes a day taking care of that as a prehab so I'm gonna get in your shoulders gonna get better I'm gonna stretch my hamstrings to make sure that I don't have another hamstring injury and we talk about that we ask him to do that on a daily basis and in turn I really believe I can't measure it because I don't know the injuries when they don't happen but I think it uh, puts us in a position to prevent us from rehabbing injuries or having reoccurring injuries. Our next question is from Ryan Crooks. Everybody talks about the offensive scheme and how much it will change or maybe stay the same but what will be done to improve the defense? The defense? Yeah. Well you know this defense was uh, unbelievably solid and I, I think that we, if you're going to, if, if what's going to be different is, is we will play from an even front to an odd front. You'll see us move out of that pre-snap. So we'll start four down and we'll move. So that in turn causes a lot of communication within an offense to be able to have to deal with. Now all of a sudden it's an odd front, and it it sounds crazy, but that simple switch really causes some problems for offensive linemen and the protections to be able to handle. Uh, I think you'll see us be able to be uh, uh, we'll blitz more and that's just the bottom line we'll, we'll blitz more we'll have more pressure packages and uh, I think the kids are excited about that kids love to blitz you know the, well, the defensive do. terminology that I talk about is I love to I want I want to see safeties make plays on the other side of the line of scrimmage at times I want to see those linebackers get in that position Chris is a perfect example we want him to be in a spot to where last year he played some defensive end he moved around the year before he did a lot of that well you're going to see him do all kinds of things you know last year he ran down the middle of the field a lot in, in their, their cover two stuff and, and played to Tampa too. He'll still do some of that stuff, but he's going to be coming off the edge. He's going to be coming up the middle. He may even put his hand on the ground as a, as a defensive tackle at times within the scheme in those sub packages. And it makes it fun. I want a lot of kids involved on the defensive side of the ball, a lot of packages because it puts young men in positions to have an opportunity to play and make plays at, uh, in a big time game. It's fun to be on Chris Boylan, isn't it? I mean, I, I think he's a natural leader and kids are going to follow. Yes. Yeah. By example, you know, every single day, you're going to get the same thing out of Chris every single day. He walks into the room and uh, he expects greatness out of himself and everybody around him and uh, he demands that out of his team and he'll be obviously he's been a leader here for a long time and my respect for him started about a year ago when I started watching yeah. film. You've got a pretty good scouting report on <laughs> yeah, some of your returning players do. don't you? I do yeah spend a lot of time watching those young men and he was one of those and uh, it's, he's, he's an exciting kid I'm so glad he's back for, for another year. This qu question is from Ben Oler. What has been the most important thing, the most important thing you've learned uh, from your association with the state high school coaches since you've been here? Uh, their commitment to young men, period. And when I say that, I'm not just talking about football. Um, you know, you walk around these high schools and uh, it's impressive the, the commitment that the coaches have, the athletic directors have, uh, the plan for them academically and how it's set up for them to succeed. Uh, University of Wisconsin is a hard school to get into and we all know that but these young men are preparing themselves to get into the University of Wisconsin when they're freshmen and sophomores. So the commitment to the football program, yes, this is great football and there's great players in this state and there's great coaches but uh, you know, uh, even more impressive to me is their ability and their care factor and their want to to allow the young men, once they're done with high school, to have an opportunity to move to the next level. They prepare them from ninth grade on. They become a huge part of your program, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, uh, you know. You can't our, say that enough, yeah, I Yeah, I can't. I can't say it enough. And when I came here, I made the, I made the comment. I said, well, I'm going to call each and every one of these high school coaches. I'm a long ways away from getting that done <laughs> because I had no idea there was 400-plus high school that play football in the state of Wisconsin, which is, which is uh, again, very, very impressive. But uh, I've got a chance to be around them at some different clinics. I went to Lambeau and was at that uh, function last weekend. And uh, first class, I mean, it's as good as there is. You go to a lot 
lot of those functions and you know whether it's an all-state banquet an all-star banquet or whatever it may be but that one was uh, was set up in a big-time atmosphere in a big-time venue and those kids were, were honored the right way and it's just a credit to the high school coaches for setting it up hey you were a high school coach absolutely, once, right? absolutely. you can relate yep they put the kids first and that's what matters all right final question from Kilgore do you expect to recruit the uh, junior college ranks the JUCO ranks only to fill needs or holes or will you do it more on a regular basis? Really to fit, to fit holes and, and fill the needs that we have in certain positions. And there's so many ways that can happen through, you know, hope it never happens, but it could happen through injuries. It could happen through young men that are recruited and possibly changed to a different position, wherever it may be. But I believe we can recruit at a high, we can recruit at a high level at the junior colleges. And um, every single year there's, there's quality junior college young men that have their own story, just like every high school young man does. And they deserve the opportunity to uh, get a University of Wisconsin education and play football here um, if they prepared themselves the right way. But so it'll, it'll uh, I hate to use the word fill the holes, but if it's a need, we'll go after those young men. And the worst thing is for people to stereotype junior Absolutely. college transfers, and it happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. I'm and glad that, I didn't get stereotyped no, because I was there. one of those guys myself. Wow. So, so was Aaron um, Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's, there, there's a lot of situations that uh, put young men in, in the, into the junior colleges. Maybe they, maybe they developed late. You know, maybe they graduated a year before they had to, and so they were still growing and developing, didn't have a chance to get that um, uh, the growth spurt or whatever took place. And that's what the University of Wisconsin football program is built on. Those young men that have a chip on their shoulder, whether they're from the state of Wisconsin or wherever they may be, that's why the walk-on program is so successful because you get those young men that walk in that are, uh, they, they, they're like, yeah, I'll show you. Yeah. And, and I like that. And you get that out of junior college kids a lot. All right. Based on your schedule, we're in the first quarter, are we yes. not? This is winter conditioning. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And then we move to the spring spring practice, which is the yep. second quarter. Yep. Yep. It is. We're right in the right in the middle of the first quarter, and believe it or not, there's five weeks left till the first quarter is over with, and we start spring ball. So it's it's coming upon us very very quickly, and uh, proud of the young men, the way they've handled themselves, and you know the uh, the work ethic, the morning workouts are fantastic. Today was our best morning workout that we've that we've had, and I think they're starting to just uh, you know gather uh, gather strength in, in what they're doing and understanding where we're going. So it's good, excited to get to the second quarter, but we're not ready for that second quarter yet. We got a lot of work to do and uh, get the scheme to the kids and, and start that process. There's no scoreboard now. There's no, no. game to prepare for. No. How, how do you measure their competitiveness? I know you well, broke them yeah. into teams. Did uh -huh. you not? Ten different teams? Yep, we're in ten different teams. We compete every day, socially, academically, and athletically, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's fun at times. Today we had a relay race, and I think the coaches uh, had a little controversy on who the winner was, but Coach Simon has the final say, so it was, uh, it's fun. But I, you need to compete in life every day, and it doesn't matter who it is. I mean, I, I, I believe that, and you know, I, want to, I want every young man in this program to compete in those three areas that we talk about all the time every single day of their lives. Uh, they've done a great job with that, and um, you know, uh, it's uh, my favorite part of the day, and it always is with this job, is the time I get to spend with the kids on the field or the time I get to walk down to the weight room and just spend 15 minutes with each lifting group and just you know, being around them. And you know, they put a smile on your face because uh, that's why I do it. And it's just uh, these are a tremendous group of kids, and it's been so fun getting to know them. And got a long ways to, long ways to go to get to know them the way I want to, but uh, we've definitely started the process. Now, before we let you go, you probably already in your mind have some thoughts on what you want accomplished during the spring. And we'll put up a graphic to remind everybody that the spring game will be April 20th at 2 yep. o'clock. Tickets are $5 and the profits will benefit the UW School of Pharmacy. Yes, that's, that's, a, that's a great thing that, uh, you know, every, I didn't know that, that the proceeds from the spring game every year is picked out to uh, school of pharmacy good deal. this year and it's it's very very special but there's that's going to be a, an interesting time and we're excited for the spring game to be building up to that and you know we're going to have some scrimmages through those Saturdays and um, you know we're it's going to be a it's it's a it's a fun time it's a, a learning time our goal for spring is real simple is to teach them and then practice them teach them then practice them and from my time with these kids, they're going to wrap their arms around that philosophy and be very excited to go out and compete. And we'll get after it when we get out there on those Saturdays. Not everybody's going to compete. You know, Chris Borland, he's not going to. He's going to be some days. He's going to look at me in spring practice and say, "Really, coach? Can I go play?" And I'm going to say, "No, you really can't." So uh, we're going to keep him protected and and let the young, youthful kids develop in the program. Get the the, the veterans 
prepared, but yet do everything we can to keep them healthy and get ready to the, uh, for the games when they come. Spring's out. another great opportunity to get those high school coaches engaged, oh, too, absolutely. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we'll have the coaches clinic coming at us very soon, and they'll be a big part of that, and we want those coaches to, you know, a lot of places just have a coaches clinic, a high school coaches clinic. We, we, they have that through the, the, the association, but for us, we want to open our doors to all the coaches and let them understand that after practice, we would love to sit down with them and, and help them in any way because we can learn too. I mean, trust me, we, we got a lot to learn in the, in the world of football as coaches, and so we like to, to reach out and let them know that they're welcome anytime. Gary, thanks for sharing some time with us no today. Problem. Congratulations on Thank your you. first class Appreciate it. at Wisconsin. When we come back, we're going to talk with the voice of the Badgers, Matt LePay. You're watching Signing Day Live. Welcome back to Signing Day. I'm uh, Signing Day Live, I guess would be the actual title of this. Yeah, I'd like to thank the planners of this. I get to follow Gary Anderson. This is, uh, this is great. Usually you go junior varsity, varsity, not the other way around, but here we are. That's all right. So, yeah, Matt LePay joins me, the voice of Badger football and basketball. We've been through a few of these. You understand the routine. Every year it changes a little bit, especially this year with so many other changes. Uh, surrounding this program. Uh, I, I don't know how we could best describe what has happened here in over a year. It's, it's, it would take more time than we have, let's yeah, put it you, that you way. Yeah, you probably can't, but I, one thing that's interesting in just listening to, to Gary Anderson, there's been changes, but there are constants. You hear the word fit, no matter who the coach is, or really around here, no matter what the sport is. Uh, if you can find, if there's a junior college player who's a fit, then you recruit the junior college player. If there's a high school player from Wisconsin who's a fit, well, obviously you recruit that Wisconsin high school player, but you, you go out of state, different areas. And I think with, with transitions with coaches, it maybe opens up new grounds in recruiting, and, and I think maybe we will see a couple of examples of this. I'm not the brightest guy around, but I've been around a long time, and the one thing that I've already learned about Gary Anderson is people like him. <laughs> you found that to be true, too? Absolutely. People really like him and respect him? Absolutely. Well, we, you know, we did the radio show with him, and he brings his, his entire staff in uh, on, on Tuesday night. And just the number of people, sponsors and, and folks from the area who came out to say hello, and you spend five minutes with them, and everybody to a person walks away saying, wow, you know, this, this, he really, he's a very personable, very likable guy. And it just sounds as though, Mike, even... In, in the, the days following his hiring, when you talk to the players who are getting ready to play in the Rose Bowl, they come away. That's really what matters the most. They come away saying, wow, you know, this, is, this is a guy that uh, they're really eager to play for. And he was able, Gary and his staff, they were able to hold on to, to most of their commits, the verbal commit, commitments. I'm not sure people understand how difficult and challenging that was. I was bracing and told anyone who asked you should brace for, some, for several players to change their minds. 
and it didn't happen. It's natural it was, to it feel that way. Absolutely. And I think really you would probably expect that in, in any year even without the transition. But with the, with the circumstances as they unfolded here, I think it was natural to at least brace for it. And it didn't happen with, with only, only a couple of guys. And, and what we also saw was not only was he able to hold the bulk of that class which had verbally committed, they were able to add some other players maybe from territories where they would not have been able to probe or had not probed otherwise. He's got a plan. He knows where he wants to go. He knows what areas have been good to Wisconsin over the years, and he's not going to ignore those by any stretch of the imagination. But I think he will expand the recruiting areas. Yeah, he, he will, and it was, it was interesting, again, listening to your conversation with them talking about the importance of continuing to develop the relationships with high school coaches. That's big and, for him. And you get, the, you get the impression that he means it when he says he's going to contact oh, yeah. all of them, and he is in the midst of doing that. It was Gary Anderson who initiated a meeting with the Football Coaches Association here in Wisconsin. It was his idea. It wasn't the association coming to him. It was Gary Anderson going to the association. Things like that, uh, and the Journal Sentinel had a good piece on that recently, it might sound like a little thing, but it isn't. 23 years ago, we heard a coach come in here and say he wanted to put a wall around the state. Barry Alvarez was pretty successful doing that, and it looks like Coach Anderson is intent on keeping that wall very, very solid. A lot of similarities yeah. uh, between the two men. And Barry said that uh, when, when he introduced him as the head coach a few days before Christmas. It was like he was hearing himself when he heard Gary Anderson talk. And, and I think it's true. He talks about you being able to develop relationship with, relationships excuse me, with players and getting to know the coaches and, and getting your, your recruiting uh, or getting your assistance to, to hit different areas of the country in recruiting. And yeah, it does sound like there are a lot of similarities between Gary Anderson and Barry Alvarez. We're all going to get to know some of these players sooner than later. Uh, some will make it. Some will make it big. Some won't. I mean, that's just the nature of this business. It is, and it's why I'm, well, you and I aren't sitting here trying to break it all rattling down. Rattling off names. Rattling, yeah. Trying to impress somebody well, who can't do that. And, and again, I think Gary put it very well and, he's, and has said it multiple times, you grade these classes in three years. We're going to see all the rankings, and it's fun, I guess. Uh, you know, who's number one in the nation, who's top five in the nation, how the Big Ten ranks one through 12. It's fun. But at the end of it, it's meaningless. I mean, Wisconsin's won three straight Big Ten championships. I don't think the last three recruiting classes were ranked number one. So it's that line that you'd rather be highly regarded in the fall than now. It's fun, but I, I know this is a group that, that has this staff excited. But you're right, no one bats a 1,000. But I think there are some intriguing players. And, and look, in the state of Wisconsin, we're always interested in see how these Wisconsin players, high school players, turn out. It's another building block. And we're more familiar with some of these players than others. I mean, how can you not be familiar with a Watt? Yeah. A W-A-T-T, -T, a, a Watt, another Watt will be playing football here at Wisconsin. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to see that. And uh, J.J. wasn't bad. Derek looks like he's, he's decent. He's okay. And so and he's getting all, better. Yeah, yeah, and we're eager to see T.J. Watt. And, and the walk-on program. It, it, we talk about similarities between the two coaches. Big Barry, time. Uh, very important to Barry Alvarez. Very important it was to, to Coach Bielema as well. And Gary Anderson, the same thing. Uh, he's emphasized that. And we could see a few more walk-ons. The, the list is, is now legendary. I don't think it's a stretch to use that word, legendary, of walk-ons. The, the, the guy who was overlooked by everybody, who not only contributes, but in many cases here is a starter, and in several cases turn into All-Americans. You just never know. Gary Anderson was a walk-on, so I think he can relate to, to a lot of people on that front. In bumping to, into some Badger fans this week, they were, I think, I don't know if excited is the word, but intrigued by Wisconsin recruiting junior college players to whatever extent. And let's be clear here, they're not going to be a high percentage of JUCOs on this roster ever, okay? But to fill needs, especially now as he moves into this program, it's very important. Yeah, two things there. Barry recruited some with success. Um, it, it doesn't happen a lot around here. And as, as you and, and Gary touched on, it's important not to label junior college players. It's really easy to do that. When you think junior college players, you might have negative thoughts. They're, they're unfair stereotypes. As, as Gary Anderson says, everybody has a story. Whether you come directly from high school or you go to a prep school, if you go to the junior college ranks, um, it, it's important. And as he says, it's important to recognize that everybody has his own story. And, and as he says, they're not going to major 
in recruiting junior college players, but if there's one who, we go back to that term, the right fit, if he finds one who's the right fit at a certain need, then yeah, they're going to go after that player, and they've proven that already. When he meets uh, with the media this afternoon, how long before he gets the first question on the quarterbacks, <laughs> plural? Huh? I say uh, no, no deeper than question two, and probably question one. Because, look, last year, what was the big story? The lack of healthy scholarship quarterbacks. This year, the story is going to be the depth of scholarship quarterbacks. And how so they healthy all competition. Yes. And what the kind of situation will ultimately be. Who's going to be the star during the fall? Well, that's going to take some time to figure out. But you want to, you want to see to what level some of these quarterbacks will compete this spring. Yeah, we, we have a pretty good idea of what Joel Stabby is all about. Very good arm. It had a very nice season up until the point of the injury. Kurt Phillips has been an amazing story to do what he was able to do. We're all eager, I think, to see what Bart Houston is all about. Look like in the ball practices, he has a live arm. John Budmeyer, you know, if you counted out Kurt Phillips, you were wrong, so you probably better not count out John Budmeyer. You have Chase Knox, now Tanner McAvoy, not in the spring with him, but in the summer. Uh, it's a, I, I don't think you're right. I don't think they're looking necessarily for a starter here coming out of spring ball, but maybe you can start to answer some questions on who you think could be in a position come fall camp. A lot of positions to look for. Spring ball, I think, is going to be very, very intriguing this season. Today was another chapter in Badger football. As he's called it, the first quarter. And, and to think, you know, in some ways, maybe if you're a player getting up at 5.30 for that workout, 5.30 in the morning, five weeks sounds like a long time. But if you're a fan, spring practice is starting in, in five weeks, a little less than that. Um, today kind of reminds us all that it, maybe it never really ends and that the, the Gary Anderson era is very much underway. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Thanks for joining me. For Matt LePay, the voice of the Badgers, I'm Mike Lucas. Thanks for watching our Signing Day Live.